Hi everybody, Scott from The Digital Picture here. Today we're gonna to do a quick walkthrough of one of the rooms we finished in the later part of 2022. We're gonna walk through some of the main challenges, the cool bits we've done, and all of the awesome parts that have brought the room together to make a fantastic result for our client. So this particular screen is 158 inch in CinemaScope, which is the ultra wide movie format that you see if you watch on your TV at home, you'll actually get a black bar on the top and bottom of your TV screen. This image here is about 3.7 meters wide and it's giving us close to a 60 degree viewing angle on the front row, which is where we wanna be if we wanna get a maximum image size for the front row. The actual screen itself is a micro perforated material and this material is actually a 1.3 gain gray screen material. So this is actually helpful with ambient light in the room because it's got that gray component to it. So it helps us maintain contrast on screen. It also being 1.3 gain and the size of the screen, it helps with the overall picture brightness for HDR. So all in all, this is a really, really excellent image quality and screen size for the room. And then we've paired that with a Sony VPL XW7000 ES projector and a Panamorph anamorphic lens. And that coupled with the Lumigen video processor and the large screen, we're actually getting over 150 nits on screen, which is really superb image brightness. These new Sony projectors have really, really good black levels and contrast. So that gives us a huge amount of dynamic range for HDR content. So the images are real lifelike and three-dimensional on screen. How the actual Panamorph lens works is that the projectors only output an image in 16 by nine. So what we would do is we overscan the image on screen so that the black bars of the CinemaScope content is projected off the screen. And then when we put the lens on, it actually does a vertical compression to the image. So it pulls all of the light coming out of the projector back into the height of the CinemaScope screen. And then using the Lumigen or the projector, we then do a vertical stretch or a horizontal squeeze for our CinemaScope or 16x9 content. It's actually really usable, really fast. There's no zooming involved with the projector. Once we lock it down, it's in place and it stays in place and you get perfect image quality all the time. One of the biggest technical challenges that we had with the room was actually getting really good subwoofer placement. Because the sides of the room were all glass, we actually did some pre-design testing for standing waves and all of the normal peak and null points that we'd normally get in a room this size actually were not occurring at the locations where they normally would occur. That made me come up to the conclusion that traditional subwoofer placement wasn't going to work. So what we did in this instance is we actually used these column to frame out our subwoofer placement. So behind here at the back here we've actually got a 15 inch Crick subwoofer here which is a Cyclonics 15 and this is an acoustically transparent curtain. So the sound's actually passing through here, no problem. We normally actually have a grill on here just to protect that sub drivers in case the curtain happens to touch it. We also have here a Hyperphonics 45, which is uh, our surround speakers from Crix, and they're mounted at the correct height here. And that's all hidden behind the curtains. We've actually got four of these Crix subwoofers in the room. And by spreading those four subs out, it's actually given me a huge gamut of options for calibration. So we've actually been able to get really, really good bass performance in this room and really consistent performance across both rows of seats. Here we've actually got, at the front of the room here, another Cyclonics 15 subwoofer inside the cabinet. But the client actually wanted to have some storage for DVDs, and it was really difficult to fit that in the room, primarily because we had so much equipment in the middle cabinets. So what we've actually done in this instance, we've, we've actually got the 15-inch Cyclonics sub, takes up the entire width of this section of the cabinet at the back, with the driver exposed, and then we've got another bolt-in cabinet that we can remove here that's got the DVD storage in it. What's important was that we actually have to have enough space in behind this cabinet to let the port in the subwoofer breathe so that it can actually perform properly. We're getting exceptional bass as if the subwoofer was installed in any normal environment, uh, but we get the extra storage as a result. This is actually where all the brains are. So we've got in here an Anthem MRX740 AV receiver, and we've got a Lumigen 4K video processor, and a Thor power controller. And we've also got some game consoles and source components in here as well as networking equipment and wireless controller for the blinds and curtains. We've actually cut ventilation into the bottom of the cabinet kick here where you can't see it. And then in the back of each part of the cabinet, we actually have fans fitted that are drawing air up through the middle of the cabinet and drawing it out to the outsides. And in each subwoofer cavity, we've got air passing through and then out the kicks again at the bottom. So when the system's on, there's constant air circulation through all of the hardware. We've got two Yamaha power amplifiers running the subwoofers here and another Anthem 3-channel MCA325. That's a new Gen 2 
Anthem power amp and that's actually running enough power to run the front speakers so they've got enough output to cover this room size because it's actually quite a reasonable distance from the front speakers to the rear row. So by having that power amp there, that actually gives us enough power, enough grunt to get that system up and going so that we're getting reference level at the seats. We've got a full star ceiling system we've installed here which is giving us the twinkly lights on the ceiling. But most importantly, we've actually mounted the four Atmos speakers onto the ceiling here. Part of the Atmos install is that we're not angling them straight towards the front of the room or across the room, we're actually giving them a toe in because what we're trying to do is make sure that every seat in the room can hear every Atmos speaker. So in this instance, we've towed them in and we're pointing them in general towards the front of the platform, which is roughly center of both rows. And that's giving us a nice even spread as that speaker's actually wide angle throw can shoot to this chair on the far left, but all the way across to the other chairs at the rear right, so everyone actually can hear all the Atmos effects, and it works really, really well. One of the most important things with cinema design is actually starting out with seating placement. So in this particular room here, we've done a large enough platform that it's brought the front row forward to give us enough access to the back row. But most importantly, we don't put the back row of seats against the back wall because all sound frequencies will load against the boundary. So by pulling that row of seats off the wall like we have and putting the speakers and curtain there, it's meant the head position is sitting around about 1.1 metres off the back wall. So a lot of those effects of that boundary don't come into play when we're calibrating. The biggest takeaway from that is that when we're calibrating for the front row and the rear row, we're actually calibrating for very similar acoustic locations. So that one set of EQ settings, SPL settings and time alignment settings are actually similar largely for both rows. So it means when it's finished, you can sit in either seat and you get a very consistent audio performance.